Hi everyone, my name's M Lim and I'm a master's student in the Department of Biology here at Simon Fraser University. I'm super excited to share my thesis work with all of you. Before we get started, let's all take a nice deep breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Some of you may not know that 80% of the oxygen in the breath that we just took was produced in the ocean. Now, trees get a lot of credit for making oxygen, but the truth is, the majority of the oxygen in the, in the air that we breathe was produced by plants and seaweeds in the ocean. Now seaweeds, just like all living things, need nutrients to grow. Seaweeds living in really nutrient rich waters like this kelp on the left, they're happily swimming around in an all you can eat buffet of nutrient soup. However, seaweeds and corals in crystal clear nutrient poor waters like this coral reef on the right? Yeah, they're not so lucky. So how do coral reefs, which support massive numbers of creatures, support life when there aren't many nutrients in the water? The key is in the P. Coral reefs depend on tight nutrient cycling between animals, like this fish in the bottom panel, and plants, like seaweeds. So animals are swimming around and they're peeing a highly delicious and nutritious fertilizer all over these seaweeds, which in turn helps the seaweeds grow and makes more seaweed for these animals to snack on later. Because this nutrient cycling has been so well studied in coral reef ecosystems, it's led to this assumption that animal pee only matters in nutrient poor places. And this just isn't true. There are lots of studies that have documented the positive effect that animal pee has on seaweed growth, even in nutrient rich waters. Now this has led me to ask, where does animal pee matter the most? In order to answer this question, I've been going through hundreds of papers that have studied the effect of animal pee on seaweed growth in places all over the world, everywhere from the Canadian Arctic all the way down to Australia. Now what I'm doing is pulling the data out of these papers and using it to calculate an average effect of animal pee on seaweed growth in nutrient rich places and compare that to the average effect of animal pee on seaweed growth in nutrient poor places. Now my goal by doing this on a massive scale is to improve our understanding of the ways that animal pee fertilize and bolster the growth of seaweeds all across the planet. So I hope that the next time you go outside and you take off your mask and take a deep breath of air, that you pause for a minute and you thank all the seaweeds that are working hard producing oxygen and all the critters that are peeing all over them and helping them do it. Thank you.